Hello, everybody. It's Friday night, and it means it's weekender time once again. And on this week's show, we take a look at a passion project of an indie. We dive into some retro 80s cartoon action for Dungeons and Dragons. And we even take a look through some of the upcoming nominations for this year's Spiel de Yara. On top of all of that, one lucky subscriber will get a chance to win the Bulge Germany book and the Heavy Tank Hunter Kampfgruppe for Flames of War 4th edition from store.ontabletop.com. If you want to be in with a chance to win, you just need to comment below and be a subscriber to the channel. If you can also share us around and give us a like as well, that would be fantastic. But otherwise, sit back and relax because your weekend starts here. Hello everybody, we're back again for another Friday night of fun-filled entertainment about gaming and hobby. Hmm. And this week I'm joined by Free, Benjamin and John. Hello, how are you? Hi, hi, hi. You're having a good time? Yes. You're all gearing up and packing up and getting ready to ship out next week, are you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, John, I cannot wait. John doesn't have any packing to do. We're leaving no. you behind. We've abandoned yeah. you, John. Yeah. yeah. So I, from, get a, I get a week of peace. Uh, ah, yeah. yourself, yourself and Lloyd are holding down the fault, aren't you? Yeah. 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 Uh, so for people who are unaware, next week is UK Games Expo. Uh, we will be there covering it live for people who can't make it. And if you can and want to pop around and say hello to us, we have our own little stage uh, with our own little studio and we'll be doing giveaways and interviews and all sorts of good stuff there where people can come and say hello and uh i think we're back to licking justin's head probably i don't i don't think there are any masks on <laughs> you can at least you can at least ruffle where his hair would be I if nothing else yeah. um so if you are in the area if you've not been to the the expo before we've covered it before so you can have a look at what sort of stuff is going on essentially it's the biggest um gaming convention so tons of board games card games decks games and even some miniature games bring them by i think is back this year as well yeah i think bring them by is back they've opened up all the event areas a little bit more so there's plenty of space for you to go and join in with all the tournaments and that kind of thing and open gaming and that kind of stuff as well so and, yeah. and a whole Pretty slew fun. of live shows as well so whether it's you the Vikings it, yeah. or um nightmare live or comedy shows they've got all sorts of stuff to keep you entertained over the weekend so like yeah. i say We'll be there. It does mean we won't be here next week. So there won't be a weekender next Friday night. Ooh. And there won't be an XLBS over on Tabletop on Sunday. Uh, yeah. But we will be broadcasting all day, every day. You'll Friday, be sick Saturday, of us Sunday by the anyway, end of so the Friday yeah. live stream anyway. You'll, so. you'll have plenty <laughs> of us out there. It's basically going to be like a live XLBS for the three days anyway, probably. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you get to, get to peer behind the curtain. And as we all know from uh, The Wizard of Oz, peering behind the curtain in no way uh, downgrades what you're viewing at any stage. <laughs> it just uh, keeps everything rolling along. It's uh, just a monster <laughs> fuel, uh, Justin feverishly typing away and going, <laughs> so, so I'm just being It'd be caffeine. It's all about the yeah. caffeine. Absolutely. But that's what we're going to be up to next week. But right now, it's time to get on with the show proper, and we're going to be checking out our Indie of the Week. Ooh. And this week, it's a little teeny tiny, oh, almost not a, not existent little indie. Uh, it's a small. <laughs> it's so indie. Uh, it it's is. so it's... small. Uh, it's back nin miniatures. Oh, okay. Um, now, it's been going for a little while, um, but it is very much uh, an indie and a labor of love for one person uh, okay uh, right. so what they wanted to do oh made on blog their, spot was oh. <laughs> create their own miniature yeah. range um, yeah okay so it, it is just this little range on their blog um but what i will also say is the blog is as much part of the indie as the miniatures are um so it specializes on the um the Boshin war if you're aware of The Last Samurai, 
that's not this. This came before The Last Samurai. Okay. So <laughs> Last Samurai is based on the um, Satsuma Rebellion in about 77. The Boshin Wars, you can see there, was 68 to 69. So this was the opening up of Japan um, caused a rebellion between the Shogunate and the Imperial, which was essentially a proxy war between some of the various Western powers that wanted more room for expansion. Okay. Uh, so this yeah. fits in there. And then after 10 years of the Imperial um regime sort of changing stuff that's when it goes on to the the last samurai rebellion although as he points out in this blog um some of the uniforms you see at the start of the last samurai are leftover uniforms from this period so okay. while this is boshin it could also be used for the satsuma rebellion as well um at least the the early days of it but you can see there some of the the sort of illustrations from articles and newspapers that were used um for the sculpting then to get the, oh. the uniforms and like right uh interesting little set of miniatures that have been put together by uh two sculptors so paul hicks has done the majority uh but then He's stavros always a good sign yeah. has come <laughs> in and done some stuff recently as well mm -hmm. uh, and you can see the as always the quality is is perfection uh but it also mm -hmm. means that they will fit with other um, sculpts that because Paul and Stavros both tend to just stay in the same uh, scaling across yeah. the companies that they, they work for. So there may be room for them to go into other uh, forces and other factions yeah. and, and sort of fights as well. I really like that it's a blend of what you consider to be Western yes. uniforms with then the touches of Japanese sort of culture yeah, in, the, in, the in various, the hat the designs and that hats kind of thing. And helmets yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, yeah. are very much a, a, a leftover, mm -hmm. a remnant from the, the old way. Um, they also do sets of heads, so things like the bodies will be set cast. The heads are separate. Those are shogunate heads you can get separately, but you can also then get the um, emperors, the, the imperial heads with various hats on and some of the various clans that were involved because it, it ended up being America came in in the 50s and essentially went, we are going to attack you, sovereign, independent nation, if you don't open up so we can sell you stuff. Um, and then that kicked off the other Western powers all trying to carve out parts of the country, um, which then led to, you know, when Britain got involved on one side, then France got involved on the other side, um, and then that expanded their spheres of influence, um, which then led to the, the Satsuma Rebellion later on because there was the whole idea that they were being changed by um, Westerners inside. Sounds, it sounds again like one of those uh, wars where it's essentially the European powers using another country as their playground for yeah. a battle. <laughs> yeah, it is. Very similar to so, the Opium Wars yeah. in China at about the same, right. you know, well, yeah. similar period in time. Mm -hmm. um, but as you can see, a lot of the sort of the standard troops that you would you would need for your uh, line infantry, 1860s, so just after the um, American Civil right. War, you have this uh, Bloodless Rebellion. Although not really that bloodless, still about three thousand casualties. There you can see some more samurai-looking yeah, yeah. Uh, outfits, yeah. but then just with the, the tunics on. Is there a particular game system that you recommend for playing these miniatures out with? Or um, any of the sort of the the men who would be kings style of right, things okay. would be very good okay. for small scale um, black powder mm -hmm. encounters like this. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else up there that would World of Flame might do it as well in Her Majesty's name. In fact, I think that might actually cover this period. Uh, I guess it's basically looking for any game that covers that particular century and then yeah. being like, that'll probably fit this quite nicely, I guess. Yeah. yeah so. Weirdly, although it is for the Samurai um, War, so I don't know if it extends into this period, uh, but Daniel Mersey has just announced that there is a, a samurai expansion coming for the men who would be kings oh cool. Great. so 
We'll see how that pans out in time. Mm. Very uh, nice. But yeah. see some of the Azu. If I skip down a little bit from away from our uh, Shogunate, oh. we'll be able to see some samurai as well. Which are I, I, nice. I love Hicks's sculpts anyway, so and Stavros's mm. as well. <laughs> well yeah. I found it because I was looking for stuff for Clash of Katanas. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then stumbled across the samurai and it was like, ooh, oh, I'm having those. <laughs> what else is in here? And then discovered this little uh I you love buy those. Them straight from this website. It. You buy them straight from this website. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah you, there's a little blog on his blog about how you we purchase it essentially it's getting the codes and sending them a, a blog list. exception yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, those are amazing yeah, I, I, don't know, awesome. I don't know i don't know how you wouldn't play as the samurai <laughs> yeah I, I just love the look of them it's so cool yeah well you know there'll, there'll be samurai on both sides <clears throat> i suppose yeah even in even in the last samurai there's samurai on both sides oh those who found themselves loyal to particular individuals yeah, and well, stuff, I guess. Yeah, whether to the yeah. shogunate themselves or, yeah. or to the, the emperor. Oh, I love the movement in those. It's almost like it's a diagram. It <laughs> is, yeah. <laughs> lift swords, draw sword, lift sword, strike sword. <laughs> the clothing is gorgeous. Yeah. It's one of those games which allows you to get a little bit more fun and funky with the colours as well, isn't it, I suppose, mm -hmm. for the samurai characters in particular, because you, you can yes. you get step away from uniforms in the traditional sense. So. Now, there are some more recent ones, and as you get into the more recent ones, they start to become a little more pop culture. Okay, yeah. Which I really like, because it's... Is there a Tom Cruise? <laughs> I've not seen a Tom Cruise. Um, but, oh, Zataishi. Cool. Yep. The Blind Samurai. Yeah. Blind Samurai. Oh, man, his, his movies were so awesome. <laughs> Lone Wolf and Cub. Oh, wicked. Nice. Uh, yeah. A manga so good that Star Wars made the only decent Star Wars in the last 20 years <laughs> out of it. Yeah, true. Yeah. The Baby Yoda show was just Lone Wolf and Cub in space. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very nice. They're great. You can mm. use these in a lot more different games of Samurais, especially. Well, Not so locked in and tied down, are they, with the uniform? Yeah. 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 Well, when you start going in with the, the Samurai, <laughs> you've got hundreds of years where mm. they are the equipment well, emo, really emo samurai yeah. oh yeah <laughs> i'm sure i've seen him in a film but i can't place the film yeah yeah <sighs> he looks very familiar doesn't he yeah um this this strikes me as a range that could end up being picked up by empress themselves i would i would imagine you know how they tend to like look and pick up specific yeah, smaller did, ranges because he they, obviously works with them sell. as well so. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But it's nice that there's like a, a nice collection bit all in one place here as well. So, oh. yeah, if you wanted to go straight to the straight to the man himself, so. evil magistrates, <laughs> the masters of death. You may know them from a lot of trouble in <laughs> Little China. <laughs> Discuss. All you need is a Jack Burton mini. By the way, yeah. you can buy Jack Burton many from Big Trouble in Little China from Hassle Free. Just say, you can, uh, yeah, yeah. In case you want to full the, collection. The thunders. The studio sell one as well. I can't remember, or is it just? No, they sell uh, a Snake Pliskin. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to shop around when you're after your Kurt Russells. <laughs> just gonna leave that there. Brilliant. Um, That's you can buy awesome. a Samurai with Pug. <sighs> Just I saying, want that. <laughs> that one probably less historically accurate than the others. Maybe, maybe <laughs> just about. They'll never know. know. <laughs> so that could be a terrier. <laughs> um, we have one of the seven samurai. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, if we've got one, we may see more. Although there's a few companies doing um, yeah samurai yeah. miniatures. Yeah, and then from well, just a, there's a fantastic film called Lady Snow Blood. Hence, Lady Snow Bloody, uh, which if if you like your your uh, kitsch, it's it's well worth having a look at. In fact, yes. you probably would recognise lots of the scenes from Lady Blood or Lady Snow Blood rather, um, because Tarantino copied a lot. I was going to say, it. screams Kill Bill to me. That does, yeah. <clears throat> the whole fight at the end of Kill Bill with part one with the bride and uh... I can't remember her name. Lucy Lou. 
Lucy Liu, yes. Yeah. That is almost lifted. Whole whole sections of that are lifted from Lady Snowblood. Mm. The the fight in the snow, the the curtsying with the even the costume she's wearing is all that. But anyway, mm. um, so that's most of it. There are a set of heads as well. Um, but you've seen most of those attached to the figures. So like I said, it's a very small range. But <laughs> the other half of this indie is the blog itself. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's been going since 2013. Uh, and if you go way back wow, that's great. Um, to when he, he began it all, the first thing that happened is essentially a dissection of The Last Samurai, <laughs> where he goes through and discusses some of the things that happened, what's, what's real, what's not, the sort of madness that is in there. But it means if you're not familiar with the, specifically the boost and period that he's going to go on and talk about, the background is all in here. So it's not just a case of going, here are the models, um, good luck in wow. the books yourself. You can go through and start digging into stuff where um, he discusses some of the films. So you may actually some of the missing links for those miniatures may be in bits and pieces of this. Uh, so films that he likes he's he's big into japanese history and particularly in this period but also then the the sort of the the wider exploration of the um Mm. art as well uh but it means you can get in there and you can see things like um images from museums of various types of helmet and weaponry that are then used in the figures we've just seen and um where he's done things like conversion work using a peri American Civil War figure to get the, the more intricate uniform for an ossifer. Um book reviews. There's all wow. sorts in here. Um and I imagine at some point there'll be um some discussion about his um games he uses them with. Yeah, yeah. Also. So uh, the whole the whole blog <clears throat> is part and parcel of it. Um because it, it gives you so much detail if you aren't and I mean, I mean, it's a period that I don't know much about beyond the just the very basics mm. of of what happened to Japan when they had to open up. Um, but it's, it's just nice that you have those resources. Nice effectively. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can you can literally come in here and then just start clicking through and checking it out and seeing uh, what's in there of interest to you, mm-hmm. um, and whether or not it's a period you want to explore or at the very least just coming in here and finding some interesting uh, viewing for your, your weekends. Um, and if, like I say, if you haven't seen Lady Snowblood, put that at the top of your list. But there's so, many, there's so many other Sorry. things in there. It's just, I just remembered she was called Oren Ishii. There we go. It came to me. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, uh, very simple, quick little indie. Um, back Nin miniatures. Yeah. Uh, but like I say, even if... Uh, even if the time period and miniatures aren't one that you're particularly keen on going for, the blog itself is is just really, really good to sit down and have and re- read through or newsy through. Uh, so that's that's my little indie of the week. Present to you. <laughs> See how generous I am. Yeah. I'm just going to point out that in that last scene in Kill Bill 1, <laughs> right, when she chops the top sorry spoilers for um, an old film Scout, so yeah. where she chops off her head the thing that always got me was that there was still a little bit of her brain at the top yes. i was like you cut that off perfectly you know horizontally but you, why is the little lump there we did you did you modulate your your, your katana as you went over just a little anyway sorry that was just a weird it was it was a hitori hands though apparently that could do yeah. anything then yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> They are like that. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very inspired. That's our Quentin for you. Right. Shall we move away uh, from the indie and take a look at some news? Mm-hmm. Coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that shit you love. 
It's the Buck News. <laughs> so, guys, we're back. Uh, we're diving into some news from the tabletop gaming world. Uh, we start off with some role playing uh, with the news that Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition uh, is going to be getting a new starter set from the folks at Wizards of the Coast. Uh, this was previewed a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago as part of one of their live streams. Uh, but this is at Dragons of Stormwreck Isle and it's going to be coming out later this year in October, although it will be in Target a little bit before then those people over in the US. Uh, I think it's about a month before as well. Um, the idea of this one is that it's going to be a starter set that is like very, very focused on you being totally new to D&D. &D. Right. Some of them in the past have kind of like sort of been an okay entry point for people who have already played D&D &D and they just want to dive into the new edition with pre-gens mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. This is very focused on this being like baby's first RPG, although mm -hmm. obviously for big kids as well <laughs> uh, because as well as containing all the rules and stuff and adventure guidelines and story for taking you through from level one through to level three it's also got um digital stuff built into it through qr codes so what you can do is when you're learning to play or when you're in the midst of play or or, or, or just sitting around with your friends you can scan the qr codes and they'll take you to digital videos that will re sort of walk you through the rules at the same time and tell you all the things about really cool. characters and uh, how to make build encounters and all that kind of stuff. Um, so they've really tried to make it kind of like a combined affair for people who mm -hmm. are very new to the game. And obviously some people learn visually and some people learn just by reading and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have those different sort of options for people out there. Um, well, the other fun things about this, and I'm sure a lot of people will realize this if they're of a certain vintage, is that uh, the characters in the box are actually based on the old D&D &D cartoon heroes, but it's the kids grown up uh, so it's all those old characters that have been brought back to the tabletop for you to use in your game. And so this set actually comes with the miniatures, as you can see here. Uh, so you've got things like the acrobat and the cleric and the fighter and uh, and the paladin and all that kind of stuff. Um, so these obviously have been created by uh, WizKids uh, and dropped into the box at the same time. So some fun stuff there. Uh, I'm not sure whether or not they're going to be pre-paints or not, or they'll, they'll just be sort of bare plastic. Mm. I would imagine they're going to be pre-paints because they've done the, the digital mm. renders as you see here. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, for somebody who's diving into playing role play for the first time, a great option. I love that they've still got his, like, scared That's face nice. as well, which is kind of cool. So, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, some fun stuff in there for people who are um, diving into uh, d and um, I the, th the thing that I really hope with this, and it's something that I think a lot of starter sets have done over the last little while from a range of different companies, is I hope there's more stuff in there for going beyond that initial adventure. Um, because one of the things that a lot of starter sets do, well, or at least did in the past, especially with the D&D &D ones, is they were like, and now you've done the Minds of Fandelver, mm -hmm. and that's it. <laughs> Whereas other uh, sort of role, uh, starter sets that have been out uh, over the last couple of years have got put in like big books that are like, and here's where you should go next, and all that kind of thing. Um, it should be noted that the D&D &D rules are also entirely free online, but at least the, the basics of them anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so you could always go and check that out if you're new to D&D &D, or use that as a companion alongside what you what you uh, do with this starter set. Um, it's so a yeah. nice little set. I think it it's really it's nice good, yeah. to get... Oh, yeah, as much as you were saying, it's great for newcomers. It, that nostalgic aspect of having the old minis in I there is definitely going to get... get some people to pick it up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great little set. So yeah. Having to add a cleric in, though, because there wasn't a cleric in the... Um... No, there wasn't. No, yeah. Yeah. so there's a sort of uh, they've made one up. <laughs> made one up. <laughs> no, uh, well, I imagine. Down the line. I imagine they found her along the way. Yeah, at some point yeah. after deciding not to go home, because we've all yeah. seen the last episode, mm -hmm. badly animated as it was. We've all seen it. And if I you had seen it. Then you should go and see it. It's called Black Beam. My my first experience with Dungeons and Dragons was that show and the accompanying sticker book Choose Your Own Adventure that they oh, did nice. along the same time, which was amazing. It was really good fun. It even had little cool vinyl stickers that you could peel back off and put yes. down in different ways for to like show out the encounters and stuff that you dive into. It was very cool. So yeah. Yeah. Sweet Should be a, a pretty good way to dive in and uh, start an adventure if you did something based on that yeah. cartoon, actually, I think. Yeah, it'll be nice cool. to find out what happened to uh, Uni. I, I yes. Imagine, <laughs> I imagine Eden during one of the tough winters that they experienced yeah. uh, when yeah. they didn't go home. Weirdly, there is a piece of artwork in the sticker book of mm. poor Uni getting eaten by a manticore. Good. <laughs> so maybe oh. that's what happened. Most <laughs> thing in that show. <laughs> it's like, we can all go home. We've just got to go through the door. Me, <laughs> me. Oh no, Uni's got its hoof trapped. Oh, I guess we're all going to go back for Uni. No, Just leave. Always go back. The amount of times, <laughs> the amount of times they could have gone home on that ice 
cream cornetto headed dip. <laughs> I will just no, Uni, I hate Uni so much. So yeah. very much. He 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 practically murdered those children. He ruined their lives. <laughs> their families were distraught because of that. So we have no perspective to the D and D cartoon has has, has affected just, Jerry's life. Just, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. At the end of it, at the by the time you watch the whole thing, you feel petty for Venger. You see where he's coming from, <laughs> but Uni is still hateful. Just the worst. Anyway. Let's move on. What's next? Um, Fantasy Flight Games have announced their next expansion for Marvel Champions, the card game. So recently we've been going into Avengers heavy stuff, Spider-Man heavy stuff, stuff that's been out on the big screen, really. So we've seen the Guardians of the Galaxy. We've seen different versions of Spider-Man, even taking a kind of step away from Peter Parker. We went to Miles Morales over the last couple of months. Yeah, so it's been interesting, but this time we seem to be stepping away from the big screen a lot, and I'm quite appreciating this because we are getting the debut of X-Men coming to Marvel Champions, Ooh. and we're heading to uh, Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters um, with the next one in Mutant Genesis. So nice. this is the fifth expansion, um, and the last two, as I said, have been very Avengers heavy. You've got your Infinity Gauntlet, your Infinity Stones, um, you took away from Peter Parker, and now we're going to be facing up against Magneto and Master Mold. So you can expect the first two characters to be Shadowcat and Colossus. Okay, so you've got Pieta and Kitty Pride, and they're going to be pre-deal, pre-deal, pre-built um, and ready to play, literally straight outside of the box. So you're going to be coming up against obviously Magneto himself and his trusty hedgeman and in a circle, Toad, Sabretooth. Pyro, of mutants. Yeah. yeah. X-Men 1, you know, that kind of vibe. You are going to be need to, you're going to be stopping an assassination. You're going to be coming up against different sentinels with Master Mutt. So once you're comfortable with the expansion, you're going to have five different scenarios to get into, in which you can play part as an overarching campaign, or you can start fresh from here. So long as you cool. No. So you're going to be going, as I said, for a midst of an assassination and pushing on through Project Wide Awake. So you're going to be hiding from Sentinels, rescuing allies from Master Mold and adapting to the Brotherhood of Mutants. So as Jerry is showing there, alongside uh, the main box, they did kind of share, I'd say, a teaser um, uh, who uh, will be coming out at the same time as the box uh, that's coming in autumn. Can you guess? It's really difficult. I've, I've, I'm really challenged to get this. I'm going to say, I'm gonna yeah. say it, it's Beamhead and... <laughs> I, do you know what? I thought that was based... <laughs> I, I, I thought was it was this. Wanda Maximoff. Yeah, Wanda yeah. Maximoff and Big Head. And then <laughs> that's Quicksilver just being shot on the right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, was, well, was going to say that uh, the, the one on the right is Deadpool. And the one on the left is Deadpool cosplaying. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. Well, <laughs> if, if, if you haven't quite got it, they'll be releasing uh, Cyclops and Phoenix on the same day. So you've got more cool. Bolt to choose from, more X-Men. And the good thing is the wave is going to be longer this time. So you usually have four hero packs come out within a wave. We are going to have six in this one. Well, they've so got, they've got it. There's a lot of X-Men. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wonder who's coming up. Who's your favourite X-Men? Where's Wolverine? Who's your favourite X-Men? X-Men. Have you guys oh, got favourite X-Men? I, I would normally default to Wolverine, but I think everyone who's Wolverine. So I, I normally go for Iceman. I think Iceman's really cool. So, Iceman's yeah. really cool. I do I do believe it's my favourite, but I was the most powerful mutant potentially. I was I was child of the 90s, so Jubilee cannot yeah. it has to be my favourite. But um yeah, it's coming this autumn. So alongside your new hero packs at the same time, you're gonna have a lot of content to dip into. That's so really lots yeah. of new stuff coming. I, I assume they're all cross compatible. So it mm-hmm. doesn't matter if you've got Brotherhood of Mutants up against Spider Man or that's or are they all self-contained within? You can, can use, use everything it. with everything, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So it's pretty good. So if you do not have, obviously, if you do want to use X-Men against X-Men, you can. Mm-hmm. But if you do want to bring in your spider centrics or level the playing field with some Infinity Stones, you can. Very That's cool. Probably the best way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Just rewind time and kill all of them. <laughs> Just click. Yeah. Just click. Yeah, at that point, you know, it's... Uh, it's all going to be down to Cable as being the best X-Men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He Somebody's is very going to go cool. back and stop it. 
No, I know. But wait a minute, Cable is Thanos. What? They're the same actor. <laughs> <laughs> Mind blowing. Who's up next, Ben? Uh, so next up, uh, we're heading to World War II, uh, but by the medium of a uh, video game slash board game uh, uh, adventure from Rebellion Unplugged uh, with Sniper Elite, the board game. Uh, this is a one versus many game that was kickstarted not too long ago and uh, did very, very well, uh, where you sort of switch, switch things around. And instead of the bad guy being the one versus the many, uh, the good guy. Uh, Carl Fairburn, the sniper in the Sniper Elite, Mm -hmm. uh, is going to be hunting uh, across the board, trying to kill German sentries and take out Nazi generals and all that kind of thing uh, in a sort of uh, a a tabletop tape of the video game series that has done very, very well and I really enjoy. Um, I wonder if it's going to put cards in for shooting the bollocks off things because that's what (laughs) most people do when they play Sniper Elite. Uh, But yeah. (laughs) Forget the headshots, shoot the bollocks. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) So what we'll have in the game is that uh, it's mostly centered around hidden movement. So Carl Fairburn, the sniper, will be sneaking around the board and marking where they are using that separate board that you see on the side there. That's that. Um, Yeah, so you record your movements using the pen on that that board there. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the German sentries will be trying to move around and try and work out where Carl is Based on sound cues from when he shoots his rifle, when he takes people out with uh, with his with his uh, pistol and his knife and all that kind of thing, mm-hmm. like tracking bodies and stuff. And then all that time, Carl is trying to work towards a particular objective, which might be taking out somebody, taking out supplies, collecting uh, resources or or uh, sort of information that has been left behind by the Germans and all that kind of thing. Uh, and it looks very very cool indeed. There's also like an alert mark and stuff in there as well, which will sort of allow the uh, the sentries to move around and take people on and stuff, which is really fun. Um, it sounds like a really good sort of like switching of the uh, of the 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 typical game mechanics, yeah. where you have normally the big master evil guy is the one, which I think is really fun, uh, and it's something that we've seen a lot of, a few games playing around with uh, recently, um, as well as there being the option to play uh, one versus three other people controlling mm-hmm. all the different. Uh, German sentries, or you have just one versus one if you wanted to as well. Uh, there is also a solo mode in the game uh, that was designed by mm. one of the people behind um, uh, the Undaunted series, which is pretty cool. Uh, oh. So they've got some good pedigree to them. So the solo mode in there has been designed so that you can just play it by yourself uh, and stick around That's the board the trying to take is. out all the uh, <laughs> trying to take out all the the Germans and that kind of thing. And finally, kill Hitler. Uh, if you've watched Danger, Danger, what's it, Danger Five? Danger, Danger Five. Danger Five. Then you'll know what I'm talking about. Weirdly, I referenced that last night when I was looking at the new um, Guard Dogs for zero two hundred hours. It's like I can only remember play Danger Five. Kill Hitler. <laughs> that's uh, that's interesting yeah. that there's um. Obviously, I expected there would be a solo mode if you've got the one versus many anyway, and you you've got movement cues. Mm-hmm. But I wonder how they work for when you're actually playing against a live opponent because. Do, do you mark on the board where the shot is coming from, and if yeah. so, or and if so, yeah. then that kind of lets people know where you're going to be. Yeah, I, I think, think it must be a very difficult game for a. Yeah, I think it's based off the because there's like that track at the side which counts like the the noise that's been made yeah. by certain people. So I think that plays into it because that's one of the elements of the the sniper elite, elite board game is using. Large, larger noises to mask your shots and all that kind of thing. Oh, right, okay. But I think it will be quite challenging for uh, the person playing yeah, Carl Fairburn. So, yeah, yeah so, which is which is good fun. Yeah. Sometimes you want that kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah no, I'm fascinated to see how that goes. I yeah, like, um, really give it really good to give it a go. Yeah. Do you have Turkey's solo rules are, are mm-hmm. generally spot on whenever he's yes. done them? Uh, I really like what he came up with for Undaunted. Yeah. Uh, it was a very different way of playing out things in, uh, mm-hmm. in the solo mode so yeah i could also say that norali lovers also helped with the solo rules yeah. as well so it wasn't just david turksies who, who, who worked on our daughter and that kind of thing but you can watch the how to play video there as well from what you played which is a great That's channel brilliant. go and check it out uh, rodney's a lovely guy so yeah he's canadian so he has to be yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's one way of looking at it, i suppose okay so are we shifting away from world war ii then mm. and taking a look us all and sundry, I suppose, free. Well, it's that time of year. Well, it's that time in general. And the Spiel des Jahres nomination announcements are here. And I will make a point of saying it is also that time where I do say words wrong. So I am sorry and I'm trying my hardest. So 
the Spill Diaris nominations have been announced and they're giving a massive thumbs up to nine different finalists across three different categories. And it is the equivalent of our Game of the Year awards uh, over here on the tabletop. So the first up in the three categories that Jerry is showing there, they were announced on Twitter this weekend. And this is your Spill Diaris award and it's praising these three awesome titles. So you've got Cascadia, Scout, and top 10 up for the selection. And the three of them is so incredibly different. So Cascadia is from Cosmos, Flat Out Games, and AEG. And I really loved this title. This is one of my favourite board games from last year, weirdly. Cascadia um, is amazing. Yeah. I loved Cascadia. You've got to create an ecosystem and, and watch it flourish and you're laying down t- uh, tiles and it's set in the Pacific Northwest and you are creating a beautiful habitat for the animals that reside. Um, Scout from Oink Games, Games will put players in the middle of a circus. Uh, they're going to need to flex their cards to obtain performance, stealing from other opponents, and it's super competitive. Um, you're going to have to put on a whirlwind show. Top 10 is the last one from this category, and it is from Cocktail Games. And this is your party game for the category. So you, what you are going to do is you're going to have a scale and you're going to need to use your mind to test and place objects in order from logical to the most eccentric. I haven't played this one, but I definitely like to give that a go. Boot for unicorn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think I'd quite like to give that one a go. So that is the first category. The next category is the Kennisfield Desiaris nominations. Mm-hmm. And this uh, category adds more mechanics to each title. So this is yeah. for a little more advanced gamers, this one. The last one prior to probably more family um, but this one, the first up is Cryptid, um, as well as you've got Dune Imperium and Living Forest. Um, so you've got three different. So Cryptid is, uh, it puts players on discovering and attempting to find the elusive cryptid. So you it's mostly a deduction game. So you've got to sniff out clues from your opponents uh, and find the location of the creature. You get to end up misdirected and going all over the place to try and hunt it down. You've got Dune Imperium from Dire Wolf Games. Yes, I do know I say Dune. Um, it puts <laughs> players in the world. Well, I can just foresee it. Um, it puts players in the world of Dune itself. Uh, you will be one of the leaders of one of the great houses of Landstrad and you need to deal with the conflict and politics. So you're preparing for war ahead and getting ready to... I'm just going to say, I, even though this is based on the movie, I hats off to Dire Wolf for getting original art for this and not just putting screen yes. grabs in. Thank that is fantastic. <laughs> you know, with all of the Dune titles that are out at the moment, it's kind of nice to see one stand out. I feel like so yeah, many yeah, titles true. came out because of the movie and because of everything surrounding it. It's nice to have a standout one for people to go for. And the final one in the category uh, is Living Forest from well, that's um, adorable. I love <laughs> Living Forest. Living Forest is great. Um, <laughs> Yeah, actually quite close to a lesson. It's just, well, yeah, it's in a forest, it's got some pollen checks out. Um, What you've got to do is you create serenity on the lands and you work with the different elements and spirits. Uh, You take role with the spirits and you are attempting to save the forest from peril, stopping all the fires and Mm. that madness. Uh, Lots of fun living forests. And the last of the nomination is the Kinder Spills Jahares nominations. So this one goes to the child friend these are kids children, games. children. Yeah. kids games so you have got three different titles and it, they are bananas so you've got a wacky race token collected in quacks and co quended in dash <laughs> this is great this looks like bio bash but smaller um it seems like a lot of fun you've got down trundling down mountains with magic mountain from Mego, and there is auction clever also from uh, Schmidt spill and you need to fill your boots by rolling the dice by holding as much goodies as possible such as cakes and lovely products uh, at a birthday party um, so there is loads of different titles that have been up for nomination this year there's as I said board games card games party games kids games 
everything. There's definitely going to be something for someone within one of these categories. Um, the winners of the Spiel des Jahres Award and the Kinder Spiel des Jahres Award is going to be announced on the 16th of July. So keep your eyes out for that one. However, the Kenner Spiel des Jahres is going to have to wait until the 20th of June. So you haven't got too long to find out who's going to be the winner, but there's some really good, really, really good games in this list. Yeah. The, the nice thing about seeing the nominees is they get their own merit. Yes. Yeah. So if you're looking or you're on the fence about a game, the fact that it's been nominated in and of itself, even if they don't win, means mm-hmm. you know you're looking at a, a solid, enjoyable game, regardless yeah. of where it's going to fit in there. Um, and it means if you haven't heard of some of them, um, then they're probably worth checking out, especially if you're into your board games. So if you're looking for something to play with the kids or expand your your yeah. play with your group, um, then then checking out the uh, the Spiel Awards is is always good. Interesting <laughs> thing that Harbour weren't in the uh, kids category as well. Normally, you find like a couple of Harbour games in there, like Rhino Hero and that kind of stuff. So, but it's not, it's nice seeing there's, there's other companies, yeah, that are uh, diving in and having fun. Yeah, very hey. cool. Where are we off to next? Uh, so we move from the happy clappy world of board games and kids games to the grim dark future <laughs> because there is a, of course a new box set coming out for Warhammer 40,000 to kill team uh, it didn't take long for this to swing around from the live stream announcements a couple of weeks ago uh, so Warhammer 40,000 kill team Mardok is the uh, new game that is coming out uh, so should say new game it's a new box set with the same rules but with some additions in it um, so this comes with two new teams so you have the Militarum Traitoris going up against the Phobos Space Marines. I've got to do the voices. You have to. Uh, yeah. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of new miniatures in these boxes. Uh, the Blooded Traitor Guardsmen, as they're called, get 10 new sculpts, but then you also get two returning sculpts that you'll see there from Blackstone Fortress that will be familiar to a few people who dived in and played that game. So you have the, uh, the sort of leader character there and the corrupted, mutated Ogrim at the back. Uh, but the other Trader Guardsmen are all new, and they come with a whole bunch of different sort of weapon options here and there that you can use for, in your games, which is kind of awesome. Although I'm still, I am looking at this, and I think they have borrowed a lot of stuff from the Blackstone Fortress set, to be honest. But anyway, that's just me. <laughs> Maybe I'm just seeing things that aren't there. <laughs> like the Chaos Gods. Uh, but anyway, uh, on the other side of things, you also have the Phobos Space Marines. Uh, which is a mix of the Infiltrators and Incursors kit, I believe, from 140,000 for the Space Marines. So these are your kind of behind the uh, behind enemy lines, scouty troopers that are nice. going to be taking out targets and all sorts of different things like that. Uh, so it kind of makes sense to send those in to deal with a Chaos Cult. Although, of course, if this is one of the novels, it would probably just be one Space Marine that did all the killings. <laughs> there we go. Uh, there's also going to be a upgrade sprue included in this that will allow you to make them slightly more specialised, which will come with a few more options and that kind of thing as well. So so Games Workshop are continuing their theme of creating sort of like a mostly new gang or kill team, and then a kill team that is uh, made up made of using sort of the initial well, existing plastic kits with an upgrade sprue in there as well. Kind of what we saw them do before with the Chaos Space Marines and that kind of stuff as well, and the uh, the Corsairs from the last set. Um, in addition, has pistol on his shoulder before we move away. Oh, oh yes, that's that's yeah. an extra sniper sniper scope. Or a security <laughs> camera. Right, okay. Right. It does look like the barrel from Alaska, though. It's his GoPro. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it is. The Grim Dark Go. Hey, guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm going to go kill some traitors. <laughs> yeah, the, he just keeps footage so he can put it on YouTube oh, where he's been makes... treated unfairly. Yeah. That that the shy lens, yeah. like the old skater <laughs> montages you used yeah, to get. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, as well. <laughs> As well as the um, uh, the miniatures and set, you're also going to get some terrain. So I didn't; it's not pictured here, but it's in the larger set yeah. that we saw there. So there's the Battle Zone Fronteras terrain, which was available separately a couple of uh, weeks ago, uh, but that's also been bundled in here alongside the map that nice. you see there as well. Um, you also get uh, the rules and scenarios and updated stuff for playing on a Morocco as this sort of kill team location uh, and all that kind of thing, but it still uses the basic rules for a uh, kill team and all that kind of good stuff. You also get the cards and everything for the the various uh, kill teams. Um, at the same time, you're also going to be able to pre-order some theme uh, theme dice as well. Um, so these are often go quite quickly. So if you want to get your hands on these, make sure to check out uh, stores like Store on Tabletop, for example, <laughs> uh, uh, early on Saturday morning, uh, so you can get your help. Get yourself a set of uh, Phobos Strike Team dice or the Blooded dice set as well, which I think is uh, looking very cool. Um, very nice dice. I like the 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 uh, the black and the orange. I think it's a really nice way of 
uh, coloring things very nice black and orange black and orange just feel uh, <laughs> A few of them haven't really been cast particularly well. These no, a few of those are quite bad. Yeah, how, they how are. Did they smell? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you're interested like in diving into... Samurai looking fish thing. It does actually. It doesn't look anything like a Chaos star with additional... Weird it looks like uh, Shredder. It does. It yeah. does look like Shredder. <laughs> oh, I guess... I, is it, oh, it's a guardsman's helmet with a Chaos the star on the top of it, things. I guess. Yeah, yeah maybe. Um, for those people that are Shredder. interested yeah. in uh, in uh, playing Warhammer 40,000... <laughs> and building up their traitor guards armies, then this might not necessarily be a bad start for you. Um, I know a lot of people are excited by the idea. Well, I'm excited by the idea of, uh, well, I really wanted to collect squats. <laughs> <Tall cat. laughs> but, but I have also uh, been looking at this set and some of the new traitor stuff because I did have quite a big Chaos Army back in the day and I did quite like cultists. And I quite like the idea of doing like a massive cultist army that is just you know, um, turned guardsmen and civilians who are led by like one insidious uh, space marine or something and that is sort of uh, hmm. leading the way. But yeah, looks very if some, cool. If somebody doesn't paint that as green at the bottom as a whole can, I'll be severely disappointed. <laughs> Just keep scrolling down, Joe. That's a whole yeah. can. <laughs> like a novelty Hulk if, smash. If it, if it doesn't, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. so we'll do or the it. big foam fists that make the yeah, noise yeah. whenever you smash things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very cool. But yeah, so some kill team stuff uh, available this weekend uh, alongside some other bits and pieces from Games Workshop. So make oh, sure yeah. to check it out over on Store on Tabletop. Bing, 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 bing. So yeah. it's a mix of armor they have there as well. Isn't it, it is. It's really nice. I, I, I really like the Trader Garden stuff. I think they've done a really good job on it. Um, I, I, I think it's the same thing as when we saw with the Gene Steeler Colts, actually. Yeah, I like that we're seeing more stuff from kind of like the regular Joes of 40k that have kind of been twisted and turned by the, uh, the evil forces out there. So, I mean, you, you've got your commissar grand, you've got your standard Cadian looking fellas. Mm -hmm. This bloke's more of the uh, stormtrooper. Yeah, and then yeah. for some unknown reason, there's a fantasy ogre <laughs> with one of the mesh yeah. male visors yeah. and clubs. <laughs> that's the last time I've seen that face was on a fantasy yeah. ogre True. Yeah. presumably somebody had one sitting on their desk and thought that's good inspiration yeah. 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 Okay. I, I need a tiny ogre in my chaos army yeah. they begin to have just as your elites and then you could just flesh out the rest with standard guardsmen yeah, guard who didn't realise mm -hmm. until they'd fallen too far mm -hmm. and then they've got nothing else the tragedy oh, yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> very cool I think that wraps us up for another batch of news. Uh, we're going to take a quick swish, and when we come back, we'll be taking a look at some 3D prints and Kickstarters. All right, we're back, and we're going to take a look at some 3D printing, and this week it's Glad. I'm glad somebody's picked it. Ah, ha, ha. Who has picked it and what are we looking up? Uh, so I picked this one and I am, as you say, glad that I picked Galad. I mean, oh, oh, oh. It was a very good one. Oh, God, I was going to make that joke myself, Joe. Oh, yeah, oh, I took the wind out of my sails. No, <laughs> uh, I'm not sorry. Stick to the script. Stick to the script. Uh, but anyway, so uh, this is a 3D printer uh, who's available over on uh, Tribes and Patreon, as you mm -hmm. can see here. Um, and they make uh, a lot of different quirky miniatures that could be used for adventurers and skirmish games and all sorts of things like that. Uh, they kind of fit into the vein of a lot of uh, 3D printers at the moment, or 3D print creators at the moment, who are sort of creating things that could be used as heroes and uh, skirmishing warbands and encounters that you could get stuck into in D&D &D and Pathfinder and all those kind of things. Uh, but the thing that was uh, I really liked about these is that they've got like a really nice mix of like uh sub-genre types to them um yeah. so they do have fantasy obviously mm -hmm. but then they've also got things that sort of slip slip into different elements of fantasy so you have slightly more realistic ones you have face stuff you have grimdark uh they've, they've done a really nice job of playing around with the different ideas and the sculpts and stuff in order mm -hmm. to create a, a really fascinating little range of, of characters boobs and uh <laughs> telling all that now <laughs> Uh, and it's generally just a really uh, fun little collection that I think will be uh, good for people to dive into if they're playing things like, as I say, D&D &D or Frostgrave or, mm. or pretty much any of the skirmish games that are out there at the moment that have got a fantasy slant to them. So, yeah, so I'm guessing that you print these with the bases on? 
or I presume you get them in two because they're they're interweaved with the base. They're gorgeous. Mm. Uh, I, would, I wonder. If, I wonder I would if assume, they come in two parts or I would assume that's probably the case. Well, um I, I've yet to look at any of the file elements of them exactly, but um I would assume that they probably do them as one big piece. Yeah. Uh, with lots of supports uh, on there to keep them going. I, I I would say the bases are separate. You think oh they go object um, parts. Go on object parts there, Jeremy. Where's object parts? Right where you're at. Oh, there. Hey. There you oh, go. Ah. There's an ML. <laughs> the numbers that's, don't help. That's not going to help me at all. <laughs> no. You, you, are, you are the more experienced of the 3D printers out there, John. So if you say so, I will take your word for it. I, I, I'd imagine that would be the case. Yeah, yeah I, I would say so because you would end up with support structure onto that base. So you would oh, need a lot more yeah, cleanup that, afterwards. That would be true. Yeah. So you're probably right there, John. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, this kind of steps a little bit more towards the slightly grimmer side of things, which I think is quite nice. It's not um, the hands. Bridge. It is the hands no, it's right from like... Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really like those as sort of like uh, options for playing something, sort of sneaking around in a city like Uber Tourist or something from mm. uh, Spellcraft. I think that'd be really fun. Uh, or if you're doing something a little bit more twisted and weird, uh, or at least with an edge to it, like Range of the Shadow Deep and that kind of thing, these would be really fun. Sludge for that. and Turnip. Sludge and Turnip would also be, yes. especially with those masks and the hats in that mm-hmm. style. That's mm-hmm. very much in the in that vein of design, which I think is really mm-hmm. fun. And look at that. How cool is that? Like with little suckery hands and the twisted tongue reaching out from her mouth as well. Very cool miniatures. Um, if you go back to the main store page, Jerry, mm-hmm. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you some of the ones that I thought were particularly nice. I will do. Uh, I'm, I'm here and I'm going to get to the end of here. Well, yes. <laughs> I mean, these are very good. <laughs> We've started several we'll things. Yep. It's, it's lost yeah. a show. I think I think a few of these probably been. In, the I think a few of these have been inspired by uh, sort of like cursed city style aesthetic. Um, so you know how you kind of like roots breaking through the undead and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but I love the idea of maybe these being sort of the town guard of some absolutely plague ridden city, oh, yeah. um, where like they can't get out because there's nothing beyond the walls for them to exist in. Uh, so they have to just live in the city, and people are turning undead all the time. I think that'd be really cool. Creep around at night. Yeah. Clearing out yeah. the streets from wherever yeah. happens to crawl in it, through the evening. If you scroll down to there's some slightly more just sort of stat there we go. So there's some knights and stuff that I think are mm-hmm. really fun. Like the mercenaries there, I think are really good. And they've got some really fun goblins as well. And there they are. The, the knight with the hammer and the, the models below those. Whoa. I really, really like them. Um, uh, full they so, dark okay, there we go. That's, the that's what they do. Yes. <laughs> that's exactly why I like them for <laughs> Good old They're lovely. Elden, Elden Ring buddy. <laughs> They're gorgeous. Yeah. I, just, I, think, I think they're fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I've seen a couple of people printing these off um, and making them slightly bigger and using them as statues as well, which I think is really cool. So you have yeah. those like, they, some guy printed them off and had them kind of lining a, um, Holy. like a, a stairway or a hall yeah. or something. It was really fun. Yeah. Uh, but I think they're really good if you want to go down that slightly more, as I was saying, sort of traditional fantasy mm. uh, sort of uh, route. Uh, or if you wanted to make something Westerosi, I suppose, it would also be work quite nice for those. Paint those up in the different colours of the various houses of... Uh, uh, there's your Baratheon, for example. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and away you go. But I thought those were really fun. And that, as well as them being good for, like, uh, hero models that you could use in your games, I think this is one of the really nice kind of, like, encounter kits. Um, so they did the Fae one, which you saw before, which mm-hmm. was really, I think would be really good for an encounter. And then you kind of this one where you run into maybe this tiefling who's like the, the head of the guard in the city. And these are her sort of minions and stuff. And you could make her either all good, depending on how you want to do it, I suppose. But uh, I just thought See, these were really, really You say really head fun. of guard, whereas I'm looking at that going, she's their scout. Expendable. <laughs> well, <human>. yes. <laughs> Push her head. She gets eaten by one of the things. Oh, shit. Any more then. You just in, can in suddenly Jerry's grim dark world. Yeah. That picture before you can suddenly make it all the adorable by sticking two googly eyes at the top of the helmet, and suddenly yeah. it looks like a frog. <laughs> yeah, well, I, like, I like the um, the helmets. Yes, the very helmet really reminiscent cool. of. Oh, I'm trying to think of it, but they were like a Renaissance jousting helm. Yes, They're very impractical for day to day wearing in combat. They remind me of the ones that you would have seen in the Knight's Tale and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> My helmet is bent onto my head. <laughs> that, that type of thing, yeah. Yeah. Well, they're nice. There's your little goblin yeah. pack, uh, which I think is really cool. Uh, and what's quite nice about what, what I quite like about that is uh, because of the way that it's all sort of themed <clears throat> and built together, mm-hmm. you get the idea that it's like maybe a band of goblins 
And there's a really nice mix of male and female goblins in there, which I think is really cool. Yeah. With different weapon options and things. You've got the oh, troll giant. But then you've got those human sort of mercenary bandits at the same time. And you can kind of be like, ah, so they've decided to bring them on yeah. to help them with some kind of nefarious scheme where they're trying to infiltrate a city or something. Yeah, <laughs> stuff Rebels. off the top shelf. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, fans of I Rebels. I'm quite rich. <laughs> Desperately trying to get the, uh, the town guard to stop butchering them. Yes. Oh, they're delightful. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're, they're just, and what, oh, the other thing that's nice about those is just they're full of character. I think it's really cool. They, very, they are, yeah. Skull masks are always good. We learned that from Willow. Hello. <laughs> it's true. He's learned from Cubone from Pokemon. Well. Mm. There he <laughs> Here's the generation um, thing coming into play once again, kids. <laughs> He's killed his mother, just like Cubone. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just that the mother died. I, I don't know my Pokemon law. Uh, <laughs> shut up. Leave me alone. Right, okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, some really cool models there that I think would be really fun Ooh. to paint. And what, what uh, again, what's quite nice is that they've kind of looked at what is available, I think, for uh -huh. Dungeons & Dragons games, and they've tried to create a lot of stuff that you don't necessarily normally see. Yeah. So, like, you've got a bunch of sort of slightly quirky and different looking heroes, yeah. even if they're very much along the set in the in the same vein when it comes to their sort of race or lineage. I think it's quite mm -hmm. nice. Um, so, it's a really nice little set of uh, a, a, well, a nice collection as a whole. I think for mm. a lot of people to get stuck into, and it's they've been going for quite a while as well now. And they've done some really nice stuff. Oh my god, the rabbit folk assassin crocodile! <laughs> Here are these arena fighters. Oh, mimics. Oh, this I is great! Come to be mimic, yeah. yeah, and a whole bunch of wizards. Obviously, as anybody who knows, when your town is surrounded, the first thing you do is kill all the wizards, <laughs> round them all up in the town square, kill them all. Because chances are they're responsible for most of it. Just saying. Pretty much, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh, that's a eclectic mix of people there, isn't it? There is. I've recently been reading uh, a book series called Kings of the Wild, and in it there is uh, their, their sort of elder race uh, are, well, they're not buddy people, <laughs> but they're, they're effectively like elves, but they have like really long bunny style ears on the side of their heads uh, yeah. rather than traditional ears. So it's kind of like taking the idea of like a knife ear to the next level kind of thing. Uh, and they're so amazingly cool in this in this oh. world. And all I could think of there was like, oh my God, it's one of them. It's one of the Druin. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, if you haven't read Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames, give it a go. If you like D&D &D and sort of fantasy stuff, but you like it being grim, but actually quite funny, uh, it's it's very worth going to check it out. So yeah, And he reminds me of one of the heroes from that, one of the sort of, like a has been coming back to, to rock yeah. out again. So, yeah. It's weirdly <laughs> as nice as the knights look, these and then the humans from the goblin band mm -hmm. yeah. who have a uniform esque look to them, but yeah, a bit more yeah. ragged and rough, I think really look Aww. the part for skirmishy mm -hmm. games. And they're the kind of models that would take to painting really nicely as well because you've got all the nooks and crannies for the washes and stuff, and or if you just you contrast paints or whatever, to seep into and sort of yeah. make the miniatures pop, which is always something that's uh, nice about these kind of pieces. So, yeah. The more detail the miniature, the more easy it is, well, the easier it is to paint, mostly. So, yeah. That's what they tell me. <laughs> yeah. Very pretty. Mm. You're not ninja. good. And, and they're splint off. Yeah. Four. <laughs> also, he's a ninja. I often think, why do we not see more pirates with uh, massive crocodiles? Uh, yeah. Pets? yeah. And I imagine it's because they end up being eaten by their pets. Yeah. More than likely. Titan Titanforge did a really good uh, set of ogres that yes, had uh, crocodiles. I, I remember yeah. that. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's probably so you, I mean, In fact, I'm fairly sure you can still get them. So. That's oh, a yes. lovely yeah. looking mimic. Again, going for those kind of Dark souls -y vibes as well as just D&D. &D. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Open it up. Every, hesitantly approach every chest. Check for red marks on the floor. <laughs> if safe, open chest. And roll away even if it's fine. So, yeah. <laughs> right. Or, I'm just throwing out there. Find chest. Get tiefling. Scout to open chest. Ah, yes. Of course. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> That's use why the, you bring tiefling. Use the tiefling scout. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of weird and wacky stuff in here. It really yeah. is. Yeah, they've got dragon. Dragon, they've got dragonborn. They've got wolf folk. They've got That's druids, right. tree treemen, all the kind of <gasps> <things. Yeah>. treemen. 
John a lovely bear. <laughs> oh, Mushroom Man. That's what I wanted there. I really like that. That's gorgeous. That quite that fits quite nicely with the aesthetic of forces of nature from Kings of War, actually. Yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, very good for a tree herder. Yeah, mm-hmm. tree herders are filth, by the way. And if I catch anybody playing tree herders against me, I smash them. The <laughs> Especially the wilt father. Why did the wilt father get buffed? It's an outrageous thing to add into the uh, Clash of Kings pack. I'm just saying. <laughs> there you go. There's a good example of how they come. Sectional. Ah, yeah. oh, that's brilliant. Presumably, it must be fairly chunky then. If I'd imagine so. It looks fairly big in that up. Uh, paint. That looks pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, wonder if we've got one I think it's because the, I think it's because the eyes look very no, similar we... to the forces of nature ones. Mm. So it matches quite nicely with that aesthetic yeah, and that look to their faces. I think so. Yeah. To the woodly woods. Very very pretty. I do like wood things. You're not going to tell mm-hmm. size. I'm, I'm with you on that size. then. <laughs> I wonder if it's like a hundred mil base or maybe just a sixty. Mm. Bigly though. That would be people to find out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I suppose it's one of those things. It's yeah. uh I like that spread, so it doesn't actually cool. need to be well, any that's size. True. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a look yeah. at a couple more of the monsters. Oh, <laughs> it's as close as a lesh it's as close to oh, a lesh as we're getting. It is. In to fact, be fair. Actually, in fact, that probably that is pretty much a, a lesh. Pretty, yeah. Yes, lesh. Oh, well, there you go. Now you can all we have to do is go outside and measure grass. <laughs> you Cross too will find miniatures in your lawn you? <laughs> that's good because like. normally I just find cat turd <laughs> you've not been looking hard enough Jerry oh <laughs> yeah don't want to look too hard it's, it's underneath the cat turd oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> not believing you no I'm just saying oh that's fantastic so that seems oh it's part of the same collection from the um, last tree into the woods Oh, that's gorgeous. I was once in a... I'd yeah. make him poisonous as anything. Yeah. I was once in a D&D campaign where uh, we went down into uh, the under... I really like that because it's like a... Woody yeah, it's got a woody theme. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Uh, then we went down into like a, a cave and we fought some myconids, but every time we were killing them, the DM was saying, like, and like these spores fly up into the air. And we were like, okay. But they weren't really doing anything to us. And then a couple of days later, after we'd completely forgotten about the myconid, fight that we had we were mm-hmm. just sitting down and the guy was like roll a, a uh a constitution test and the guy failed and he just started vomiting up little tiny baby myconids spores <laughs> and just because the spores had just got inside our bodies and so there were little myconids going inside our bodies so we had to oh. try and find the cleric to try and get rid of the myconids <laughs> growing out of us it was very that's good, good. always yeah. take the opportunity to make your party suffer as exactly. much as really possible yeah, yeah. 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 I think we're all on board with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was really good because when we were when we were fighting, we do things like we do attacks, and he'd be like, "I need you to make a constitution test before you do this or whatever." Mm. And he'd be like, "And you you fail because you just start retching and Michael is coming out." I thought <laughs> it was really well really well done. So. <laughs> so. Oh, this is great. Say goodbye, depth perception. That's why he's got two axes. If he misses with the first, he's a chance the to hit with the second. Yeah. And he can never have too many daggers. That's <laughs> well, yeah. very cool stuff. That looks like something from one of those <laughs> Japanese games. Yeah, like, what, like an, the, an, an animu, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a regal looking like, horse. Like Final Fantasy type thing. Yeah, yeah. Type of thing. Especially yeah. with the shoulder pads. Yeah. Regal see, see, I'm down with the kids. <laughs> Final oh, Fantasies. Yeah. Not on a base. Ah, I see. John was right. <laughs> but yeah. Cool stuff there. Uh, another thing that should be noted as well is mm. that uh, they have their store page, as we've been looking through. Uh, they mm-hmm. also have their tribe and their Patreon. So if you want to back to get your hands on monthly packs, you can mm-hmm. do. And you get mm-hmm. 40% off, as I said at the top. Uh, oh. The sales pitch there. <laughs> uh, I'm not sponsored. N- neither are we. Uh, but they also have a really fun uh, physical uh, shop as well. So you can go over to Own the Games and you can get oh, pretty much all of the miniatures that we just saw printed for you already. So you They're don't have to do miniatures. any of the... Uh, any of the any of the heavy lifting, yeah, I might get that Christ. hunter with the badass sword and the lantern. Yeah, that he looks amazing. Yeah, um, I may end up going to this store after we finished our recording and just buying a few. <laughs> <gasps> She's so. got the feeble tash like of hiddenness. <laughs> just enough of a tash viewable to make you want to try and paint it, <laughs> but then cut your face in, in brown. And they're really, <laughs> really annoyed that you tried. Yeah. They did that with the Empire Witch Hunter that came out a couple of years ago, the Resin one. Yeah. He had a little tiny moustache hidden underneath like a little top, the top bit of his jacket. 
and it was a pain in the ass to paint because the fine cast was utterly awful. So you could find <laughs> out where the moustache began and where it ended. So. Good times. Yeah. Really cool models. Very cool. Very the back, nice. like Buffy. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Right. I am glad that you picked Galad. I'm glad. It's a bit like Galah. I keep wanting to go all <laughs> dim. dim Why even Galah? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that is 3D printing as the shares. And to wrap up the show, as always, we have some Kickstarters. Mm-hmm. Where is our first Kickstarter taking us? So I was really excited to see this one on Kickstarter this week because Household is something I've been watching over on the C1 blog for a couple of months now. So this is claiming to be the smallest RPG out there and C1 and Two Little Mice have put their heads together and they're bringing Household into a brand new edition for English speakers to indulge into because it was only available in Italian before. So let me give you a bit of perspective on what you can expect for it. Um, so the game <laughs> takes reference from European folklore. So it's set in like a Regency-like era, um, and it's all within the confines of an untouched mansion. I say untouched, but it's simply been abandoned since the master of the property died over 100 years ago. So inside the mansion is where the game takes place, and players are going to be inspecting every nook, every cranny, every floorboard, every ball and room, taking the role as little folk. And when I say little folk, I'm not talking about dwarves, halflings and gnomes. There are four different little folk that players can take hold of in households. And that's fairies, boggets, sprites and slua. I I think I'm saying that correctly. I just want to go slouch with the GH at the end, but I think I've got. Um, And then these races can then be involved into six different professions, which include the likes of soldier, hunter, scholar, criminal. And then there's 30 plus evocations on top of that. So the layout of To Rome is directed by a map that looks kind of like a floor pound of the house. Mm-hmm. And players are going to come up against loads of small scale beastlies. And I imagine a size that small can be incredibly terrifying, as you can see. So you'll find the likes of rats, spiders, bugs, and of course the perils that the little folk have throughout their adventures. So, me personally, I'd love the idea of mounting a smaller creature in something like this. I mean, like Ben would definitely ride around on a hedgehog, and I reckon Jerry would be equipped with some kind of mammoth squirrel. Hey, look, John would even have a stag beetle. That would be a solid tank alternative. So the, yeah, it's like the d- tank of the insect world. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I just befriend a bee or something. But there's, <laughs> there's loads of different creatures that that have been in the artwork, like a swan battling in a tiny ship and hooking away from a big mandible spider. And it's really nice to see that that whimsical nature of fantasy yeah, it's really um, cool. and it makes me question what's possible outside the boundaries of the household map and what creatures can be found so the game is based on the fortune system from broker compass and that's using a small pool of d6 dice to determine the outcome um it favors fortune in an adventure heavy campaign there are custom dice as part of the campaign on kickstarter and there's got different symbols that match card suits uh, scattered on each side with the joker and a blank side one of them so as part of the pledges there are both a physical and digital options to dive into although i will say that there's a book and a big book cover library and deluxe pledge that's just mighty gorgeous there's a ton of stretch goals on this both digital and physical and that's new maps new artwork mysteries cards and accessories there's also loads of optional buys like you can see there uh, like add-ons really are like the sets of miniatures um that can be bought as well so if you do just want a simple pledge and get a hard copy of household and then with some added digital bits for extra volumes you can do for 48 pounds but for everything in this campaign you can get hold of the deluxe one, which is the whole kit and caboodle, which is all of the hardback books, which is three of them, three PDFs, narrator screen, maps, dice, exclusive mini, all of the stretch goals, and that's in the deluxe edge for 120. But if you don't, if you're not too sure about it and you are on the edge of it, if you have been tempted by the look of it. It was funded in the first 10 minutes, so don't worry, it is definitely fulfilled, but there is on the uh, C1 website and on there literally where you are uh, quick start rules uh, if you do 
implement that as well, cool. which is can be downloaded over on the website. They're available in English and Italian. <laughs> and Italian. <laughs> so, um, so you can give them a cheap download, and there's quite a few to see through. Really fun. Oh, it is a lot of fun. Quick start uh, rules are 96 pages long. Wow. Um, along Quick with start. six pre gen characters, but then there's also regular character sheets mm-hmm. so you can generate your own. Fantastic. I'm guessing there's a dice conversion for moving away from the custom dice, I would guess as well. Maybe. For, so. But. Uh, yeah. But there's, there is already a ton of content that exists, as I said, because this has already existed in Italian prior. This is the new edition, so it's not starting from scratch. It's just new to an English-speaking market. And it looks like a lot of fun. It really reminds me of The Borrowers, but more so in a fantasy universe. Um, but it's, is that you there, Free, in that piece of art? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Befriended a bee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would, it would, uh, I just, it looks absolutely darling and it looks like a it lot really of does. fun. Yeah. Uh, and I've been overwhelmed and been watching this grow over on the blog uh, over the last kind of month or so now. And it's really come together and the amount of content that's on the Kickstarter is unbelievable. I love how original the setting is. Um, that's something that I've not really seen before. Which Inside really cool. the house, yeah. it's kind yeah. of a bit like um, uh, home invaders, was it? Yes, the yeah, the, the, the best broad game, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a very it's a similar kind of setting, yeah. Have, you've got yeah. a Lily Putt and various other people kicking mm-hmm. around, yeah. It's it's one that doesn't get explored a huge amount, and when it mm-hmm. does, it tends to be, I suppose, own unique worlds. So when Pratchett did it with the carpet people, you know, that there wasn't the, I suppose, feel of the Regency period and that sort of thing mm-hmm. behind it. So it has a Good twist. Uh, yeah, interesting aesthetic that's a, uh, tied to it as well. Yeah. Um, bit of a shame that the miniatures are Kickstarter exclusive as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's cool mini or not for you. Yeah. yeah, it's a shame. There's a, there's six days left on the clock for this one. Um, as I said, the campaign is jam packed for the goodies as mm. well as uh, stretch goals and add ons. Uh, it's, it's, it looks like to be a lot of fun for me. I'm really on the teeter totter of a rush back this or not, but I'm scared of the uh, old personal library that I went up with the deluxe. Hey, but, you, you 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 end up collecting role playing books. It doesn't matter. Just, just no, do it. So no, no, no. <laughs> that's but not if, all of them. <laughs> no, I know, I understand. But if you are pledging, you can look see performing in June next year. Cool, cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, ben, sticking with RPGs, then. Mm-hmm, yeah. So uh, sticking with RPGs today, uh, we're going to be looking at the stuff, the new stuff from Loke Battlements, or Loki, I don't know how they say it. How do they say it nowadays? Loke. Loke, cool, fantastic. <laughs> uh, so this is the RPG Encounters Toolboxes. Uh, so you've got the Veiled Dungeon and the Long Road. Uh, and the way that this works is it's a little bit like what they did with their initial sort of adventure box set that they came out with, where you will have two completely pre-planned fifth edition D&D adventures. So they've been designed for fifth edition. Um, And inside those boxes, you'll have everything that uh, Loke Battle Rats are famous for creating. So you'll have loads of maps, loads of bits and pieces that come alongside those maps, all wipeable and all that kind of thing. So you can use dry erase markers and anything like that. And then on top of that, all the things that you will need as a DM in order to play those adventures out on the tabletop. So you'll have all the maps, as I say, you'll have all the stats for all the foes you're going to be facing. You'll have all of the story plotted out for you. Mm-hmm. You're also going to have random encounter tables built into these, adventure generators, so that you can obviously play out the encounters that you find in the box, but also then take things to the next level if you want to. There's also unique monsters that they've come up come up with for these games, which I think is really fun. I mean, that one looks pretty unique. <laughs> uh, and also loads of other stuff in there as well, which I think is really good. Um, the other thing that's really nice about these is that as well as them being like a really nice uh, entry point for someone to be like, okay, I need to start planning an adventure. Where do I begin? Buy one of these. I also love that these could actually be used by people be- once they've gone beyond this set. Yeah. yeah. Because everything is wipeable and nothing oh, yeah. is ripped up or torn or all that kind of thing, you can use all of those maps 
alongside the big books that they've done previous to this and all oh. the monsters and all that kind of thing to just create more stories, which I think is really fun. Uh, mm. So it's not like you're going to be like, and this is for this, but it's all built into the book. So I can't really use it beyond that. Or I need to buy extra bits and pieces and all that kind of thing. Everything you need to play is there. All you just need to have is the the D&D rules. And as we looked at earlier, you can play that for basically for free, at least with the basic stuff anyway. So oh. uh, it's a really good one to dive into, I think. Um, one of the nice things about this as well is that it's given them the opportunity to create more maps. Um, so all of the maps are designed to fit the encounters within the book, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, but they're also generic enough, as I was saying, to be used beyond that in, in other things as well. And they should match up really nicely with some of the big books and the small books that they've done as well. So um, it's a really nice little collection of stuff um, for budding DMs who are a little bit stressed about exactly what to do when it comes to planning an adventure. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, they have you covered. So, yeah, really just nice. looking to see whether or not you can add in their big book of 1,000 encounters. I haven't looked at the uh, the add-ons and stuff yeah. yet, but uh, uh, I would assume there'll be something in there for, for that. Or well, I've seen, sure. the, I've seen some of the other books are available there as part of like GM bundles and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but the, yeah, the the maps in, of themselves are, are always handy to set out, um, yeah. and not just for RPGs, but skirmish games yeah. and yeah. narrative games like... Um, Rangers of Shadow Deep and things yeah, like that. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people using these maps. Well, not these maps, but their books yeah. in order to play out Rangers and all those kind of games. Frostgrave and all that kind of stuff as well. So, yeah. okay. Tricks and traps. Nice. I love that. <laughs> That's fun. And the big yeah. book of rooms. Big rooms, yeah. Look at that. So they did, the table so long that somebody can die at one end and you won't know until the next <laughs> course. <laughs> I thought a certain a certain warmonger of the of the modern age would probably quite enjoy that table. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's some really good stuff in there for people Object to dive into. And, will uh, be available in the Fagger probably... kit. So oh, there you physical go. and digital items from this Kickstarter and we'll also be making mm -hmm. other stuff available. In that case, yeah. So mm -hmm. the the thousand encounters or even the um the stickers and all that kind of cards, stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um are both, I think, must owns for anybody who's yeah. doing any sort of role playing at all. Um, they're well worth getting your hands on. But that's love, it's nice to see that they're developing more bespoke packages. That the generic mm -hmm. stuff is nice, mm -hmm. but being able to go here's a complete set, here's uh, yeah. an actual story, off you go, and, yeah, and a scenario, and, and get stuck in there. Uh, guest monster writer, hello. <laughs> You'd actually yeah. be a monster who guest wrote for the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so. The pages aren't too bad either. No, no. I mean, that's one of the nice things about Loke is that their prices are relatively cheap. Yeah. Compared to a lot of stuff that you might have to buy individually, pack wise. Uh, and yeah, you get oh, everything together. By the time you see this, the early bird will be gone, I'm afraid. Oh, no. Oh. It's not too much of a hike up to the next price, I don't think, anyway. No, so. no, it's <laughs> Like under a ten or something to the next ah, one, or ten dollars, I guess. Um, but yeah, so it's a, a really nice. Little, and a lot of people will know that we're very big fans of Loke and what they mm -hmm. do. Um, uh, I, I know Jerry, you went and box some of their stuff recently, and you've had a chat with them as well. Oh yeah, um, talking about had, their process and all that, that kind of thing. So yeah, yeah. Uh, that's something that we'll probably have to have a look at as an end of the week at some point. Not Loke yeah. itself, yeah. but during that chat, Matt went, and I've got a patron. Yeah, for yeah. when I'm just you know running my own games and things and i want like a six by four table i, I do those on, <laughs> on my patron wow. virtually yeah. for like those tabletop foundry type games That's and right. stuff which isn't part of Loke itself but at that point i'm going we should really have a look at this yeah i should really have asked him i didn't ask him i don't even know what his name we is on have patron. Time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. we'll have to find that one out in the future but yeah it's <laughs> it's nice to see he's Two encounters, the Long Road and the Veiled Dungeon, along with access to all the other stuff they've done as both physical and digital. And well funded, as you can see. Well funded. Uh -huh. And uh, very much 15 so. shiny 15 days, days left. Days, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And we're going to round things off with some miniatures. Yes. Uh, from Flags of War. So I snuck, I snuck this one in for Jerry, basically. Mm. <laughs> so very, very decent of you. Yeah. So, I'm yeah. so glad you snuck this in for me. Yeah. Oh. I've, I've got a small sample pack sitting in front of me. So Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, next week, I think you'll, you'll be able to see it as a wee unboxing anyway to see what the quality of the miniatures are like from mm -hmm. Flags of War. Um, but this is Border Wars under Reaver Moon. So it's both the initial phase of miniatures and the game 
to yes. play it with, some yeah. small scale skirmishes. So uh, if people are unaware of the Border Wars um, and the, the Reavers, then um, it was a sort of a bit of a back and forth in the sort of 16th century between England and Scotland mainly. Um, there was a lot of tit for tat around Carlisle and that sort of neck of the woods where people were constantly skirmishing and so border reavers and the border wars kicked off from there however because of the period it means that the figures here could be used for other areas um you could easily throw these guys into elizabethan ireland and um mm. and have them go up against some gallo glass and see how their horses like a dna axe to the face <laughs> you know <laughs> Vikings, who said the Vikings went away? They just sort of sat in Ireland for the next 500 years and went, yep, this works. Um, they evolved. <laughs> yeah, well, they didn't evolve. They didn't. It was but like I, the horseshoe yeah. crab. They reached the peak of evolution <laughs> and just stayed that I'm way I'm as deadly forever. as I could ever be. Um, but the miniatures themselves are um, 28 mil metal cast, um, like the other stuff that they do for the Jacobites and the Austrian Wars of Succession and uh, Funky Skull as well, that the casting is absolutely gorgeous. And it seems to have the same um, real system that the gang war game has in that you have a target number that you have to beat, but your dice changes depending on how good you are. So your, your leader will have maybe D10s, um, but your regular gangers will have D8s and then your dangers will have D4 or D6. So even though you need a four plus across all of them, it becomes slightly easier when you're a better better player yep. by just changing the polyhedral. Um, so that'll be interesting because it's, it's a good system. It's very easy to pick up. It's very accessible. Uh, and it looks like the same core mechanics are that Ian's used for that are in here as well. Uh, and then obviously things like special abilities and cards can be used to to change things up. Um, so this shows you the sort of bits and pieces you can get in it, including the tokens and cards that you need to play the game. And uh, the first phase of miniatures, um, the idea whenever he does a, a Kickstarter is to have a very quick turnaround so these generally are there to help make the molds and produce the the bits and pieces to get it on the website so if you miss the pledge here they'll be on the website within the next four to six weeks generally i think the last one the austrian wars of succession were on the website and about five weeks after the kickstarter closed and and the backers had got theirs um so it's it's a very quick turnaround and then it allows them then to move on to the next step um, yeah but as you can see, the, the figures themselves are absolutely gorgeous. From what I've seen, they're mounted in foot variants. So everybody you see mounted will also have a foot variant. And then there's some plebs who don't get a horse because they're plebs. It's it's um, what you need when you're riding into battle. Well, I say battle. Riding yeah. into raid, jumping up your horse, your, your horse, horse, your horse, horse. <laughs> bur burning down a pigsty and then going, ha, 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 and you ride away. Uh, and in the main, they are one piece miniatures. I say in the main. Um, this gentleman in the middle here in the lovely demi plate, uh, his horse actually has some really nice sort of bridling uh, and oh, leather okay. work. And the two left hand legs are both separate. Um, but are the spearmen one piece? The, the, the spear riders one piece? Yeah. yeah, well, I imagine the spears are separate because oh, okay, I, right. I only I've got this guy on foot uh, and okay. it's a cast right. spear, but the cast spear is separate along with the shield. Right, okay. Um, and the detailing is absolutely divine on them. Mm. So it's not a massive uh, bloated Kickstarter that has lots of stretch goals and will take months and months and months to to actually get there to the end. It's a very compact and bezier nice. uh, Kickstarter where it's just, here's the rules that we want to get out and here's the first wave that will get people started in this period. Uh, and then from there, you can sort of advance. But the stretch goals, oh my God, the stretch goals. If you're not aware of the stretch goals, then I just have one thing to say to you. Placater, placater. Yes. <laughs> so you can get the envoy's lackey. You can oh. get his uh, deputy slash <laughs> much maligned friend and the envoy <laughs> himself. Green. Yeah. The, uh, not so much a nugget, more splat Percy. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and the Queen's envoy himself. Now, I don't know if Flashheart is going to make an appearance. Oh, whoa. I would kill for Flashheart. Maybe he'll come 
in the next phase down the line once Maybe. this has been oh. out for a while. Um, but and if anything, then the uh, the black adder like miniatures that's wonderful have to be picked up anyway. I, love, I, I really like that the first and last stretch goal as of this moment were just effectively dungas, just just ra- yeah. random folk who well, kind of get like <laughs> caught up in the the nonsense of well, the border. Even <laughs> well, he's a, he's a particular dunger. He was, yes. he's, yeah. he's just he's just missing his little mouse trap nose cheese <laughs> just to really set him off. Uh, but yeah, the, the other one just the just the poor farmer. Oh, just bless wandering him. around. Would you not burn down my farm? Yeah. <laughs> it's very good. It's the, it's the hand on the side, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Please, could you just ride by? <laughs> And it is nice to see that more will be added if they reach uh, beyond this target. And if you want to pick up additional bits and pieces, if there's it a couple really of these thinking about yeah. starting it, you can ah. you can add on additional rule books and the like. So uh, it's always nice, especially if if you're getting into it and you're thinking, well, I've got Gallo Glass and Irish Cairns um, that will work for this period perfectly. Maybe I'll just use just them the book, with yeah. these pick up. You know, a second book for a friend and not need to have a second set of reavers. So things like that are, are always handy. But yeah. Well, what was really nice about this is the, the way that they've brought together so many like elements of the historical mm. like wargaming mm. fraternity, as it were. <laughs> so you have like Sarissa on board doing some as well, using some of their range of terrain in order to kind of build up stuff and things like sure. that. You have Peter Dennis doing the artwork for the books and the characters. White Dragon did all the resin masters, so you, that's why that details carried over because they've done the basics of that yeah, from the are. digital sculpts and all that kind of thing. Crisp, crisp, yeah. crisp. And Griffin, uh, I think, are doing yes. Griffin yeah. do his, his standard the actual metals, yeah. metals anyway. So I think mm-hmm. Griffin must be doing these as well. Yeah. But yeah, you can really, if it's not a period you're into already, you can. It's a one stop shop, and it's because the gang style skirmish works so well for the border reavers you're not having to get a ton of models yeah. although eventually you will get a ton of models i imagine it's this is the game that when it popped when i saw this pop up because i think uh, andy hobdy shared this over on facebook that it was coming up yeah i saw it and i was like i don't need this but because <laughs> <laughs> i always Any really like the stuff? idea of skirmishing within this or like skirmishing within this kind of period yeah yeah and it's something I've talked about for other historical periods as well, where I'm like, well, I don't really want to build a big army, no. but I'd like to have just a bunch of fellows with, you know, uh, in this kind of dress and this and fighting these kind of skirmishes and things. Mm-hmm. And I just, I love the idea of it being like a little tiny tight skirmish game where you build your little fat family of reavers. Yeah, you know, just over the border to Scotland, too. sack everybody, <laughs> then out again. Uh, yeah, and, and it's not a massive thing. Or, I mean, I costume-wise, right? outfit-wise, <laughs> You're not a million miles away from charging down some Aztecs well, yeah. either, you know, because um, they've got the the Morian style helmet as well, uh, and the the slash silks and the Debbie plate. So you could easily transport this if you're looking for a, a small scale game to play in the Americas. It wouldn't take much to convert this across to that. You've already got the border reaver sort of stuff, which is all perfect for your your conquistador, uh, and then you just need to come up with. A, a, a way to represent the the Aztecs, um, which I'm sure probably very easy taking um, some some of the lower level, less well armed and armored stat lines, and then just uh, going from there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm just giving them more people <laughs> because you know you you only need what 156 total to conquer most of South America in one go. But yeah, you really mean to them. <laughs> well, that's poor old that's Moctezuma. <laughs> that's, that's what happens when somebody comes at you with yeah. uh, a level of technology far, far above a your big room. gun. Yeah. yeah, it's going to happen. But yeah, um, absolutely fantastic stuff as always from Flags of War. And there are thirteen days left if you fancy being a border reaver. And that is our show for another week. We won't be back next week. If you weren't paying attention at the start, you'll remember we're all going to be off in Birmingham. Birmingham. Canal. Around my neck of the woods. Yeah, yeah we are. And, Come uh, down the cut with me. <laughs> looking at doing live streams about games all over the show in the expo and possibly trying to avoid being seriously injured at the Viking display. 
uh, yeah. which you know, makes sense. Uh, but if you can't wait that long to see us on your screens again, you can come over on Sunday morning and check out the XLBS for the Cult of Games members over on tabletop.com. Uh, if you're not a member, you can get a 30-day trial to see what we get up to as we have a little quiet time on a Sunday morning and witter about hobby. But until next time, take care, folks. Bye-bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.